If you want to go from this to this, then you need one of these, the Carter Accurite Log Mill. This log mill here takes your logs and allows you to resaw them into boards that you can then go ahead and use in your projects. It's a pretty straightforward concept. Well, let's check it out and see how it works. Inside the box, we have a steel fence, MDF platform with a miter bar, some clamping parts, nuts and bolts, and of course, the manual. There is some assembly required, and the first thing I need to do is fit the miter bar into my miter slot so that it fits snugly but will still slide. Right now I can jiggle it back and forth so there are uh, really small screws here, little plungers on this side and you can adjust it with a really small screwdriver on this side so I'm going to go ahead and make some adjustments uh, along here so that it fits snugly and can run but does not wiggle back and forth like it currently does. I made the adjustments with this little screwdriver uh, and you can see the screw head there and on the other side is the little plunge ball that sticks out. So I made the adjustments so that the miter bar now slides very smoothly, snugly in my miter slot, uh, but does no longer jiggle back and forth. So on to the next step. Next, we wanna throw on the MDF platform and there are four sets of pre-drilled holes uh, to um, put on the miter bar onto the platform. You want the platform to not hit your blade, but be very close. So. These holes here, I'm um, just about hitting the blade, so I'm gonna back off one set of holes to this next set here, and it's maybe three quarters, half an inch, three quarters of an inch from my blade, and those are the holes I'm gonna use to attach the miter bar to the platform. Now I'm gonna mount uh, the clamp here to the steel fence using some washers and bolts. Now we slip in T-bolts on the underside of the MDF platform, two slots here, flip it over and mount the fence to those bolts. Included are a couple of Mylar strips uh, to attach to the bottom, uh, which will definitely make this ride really smoothly on your cast iron table. So first make sure clean off the bottom and then we'll go ahead and attach these strips onto the bottom. You also wanna make sure to wrap them around slightly so that they don't roll up on you. And finally, we're just going to attach the locking bar here to the fence. Again, with a couple of bolts and washers. I've got the Accurite log mill all put together. That took about 10 or 15 minutes just to get it out of the box, a few bolts, and we're ready to go. Now you may be wondering why you need a jig at all for cutting this piece of wood. You could just take a log and run it through your bandsaw. Well, shop equipment is made for cutting wood that is well supported throughout the cut. Usually that means a flat piece of wood on a flat tabletop so that that piece is well supported when it's going all the way through this blade. On the other hand, here we've got a round log with no support on this flat table. If I start running this through a spinning blade, a number of bad things might happen. Uh, it could bind the blade really easily. It could twist this log very quickly as it's cutting through there, pinching fingers or slamming it down on the table. Uh, the blade is not supported at all here as it's coming out of the cut and that can cause problems as well since it's not here. You know, the log obviously is not resting on the table where this blade is. So that is something you definitely don't wanna do. You wanna have this log well supported all the way through the cut and that is what the Carter log mill does. I picked out a sample log here from my front yard and the first thing I wanna do is measure this log uh, in order to set the back lock locking jaw. So go ahead and give that a measure and then use the scale across the top of the jig here uh, and set the other end of the locking jaw so that this log is going to seat right in here and I'll be able to lock it down with the clamp at this end, get it nice and tight so that that log is going to be securely held as I run it through the bandsaw. Now over at the bandsaw, I'm going to sort of sight along the blade 
and want to make a nice cut, get a nice flat surface, but also want to maximize the yield of this log. So go ahead and loosen up the T-nuts here on the fence and then I can adjust it relative to the blade and knock off a nice flat piece about there or so and then go ahead and lock down the T-bolts to lock everything in place to make this cut. Of course, before getting going, eye protection, ear protection, and make sure that the jig and the log and everything is gonna pass through the blade underneath uh, the bearings and everything so make a nice smooth cut. Now that I've gone ahead and made one flat surface, I'm gonna loosen the clamp at the back and I'm gonna rotate the log here to make a second cut so we have two 90 degree surfaces. So I'll lay that flat cut down here on the jig, lock it back in, and then I'll go ahead and adjust uh, the fence again in and out relative to the blade to get a nice cut where I'm looking for. Uh, actually looks pretty good. I'm gonna go ahead and just move this a little bit. Sight down along there again, see where I wanna cut it. Go ahead and lock it down. And now I'm ready to go ahead and make my second cut. Now at this point, you can see that I've got a log with two 90 degree faces. So I can take it off of the jig here. And you can see at the end here, we've got rounded and two 90 degrees. So now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my fence and I can start resawing this log. I've got my fence set up for maybe about one inch, three quarter inch cuts. Let's go ahead and start resawing this. So there's my log, nicely sliced. So there is the Carter Accurite log mill, and it's a pretty straightforward jig, but it works really well. It's really well made, put together really easily. The instruction manual has great color images that go along with how I put this together. It takes just a few minutes and works right out of the box. One thing to note, a little bit annoying, is this end clamp, if you're having logs of varying lengths, you're gonna have to move this clamp uh, with, by undoing a couple of bolts with a hex wrench, move it down and put it back in. That's a little bit annoying, not really a huge deal. Um, the other thing is, of course, you're limited in the length of the log you can do, uh, somewhere up to about two feet with this size jig, uh, but I don't know about you, but I'm not gonna be cutting logs on my bandsaw any bigger than about two feet. Uh, that's gonna start getting pretty unwieldy uh, for someone in a, in a shop. Now, of course, it's a pretty straightforward jig. You could make something like this yourself to hold a log to go through uh, your bandsaw, but honestly, uh, this is made really well. It's very flexible with uh, the T-bolt, the T-nuts, and being able to slide this around. Um, you saw how quickly I was able to just take a log, pop it on there, make the two cuts to make 90 degrees, and I was up and running resawing that log, so that's great. There's nothing better than grabbing some wood that you know where it came from and using it in your project. So if you've got access to some logs, I would definitely take a look at this product so that you can use those in your own woodworking projects. Yeah.